The Senate has uh, tinkered with the original version of the tax bill and now there are officials saying that uh, the version that they currently have will nail the votes necessary to pass this version. Now after Republicans resumed negotiations early on Friday with the last few holdouts, Republican senators Steve Daines, Ron Johnson and Jeff Flake announced they would back the bill as did Senators James Lankford and Jerry Moran. Now uh, another senator to keep in mind is Susan Collins. Uh, based on the reporting that I've seen so far, she seems like she's still kind of wavering. Um, and I'll tell you why in a minute, but uh, they have made some concessions in order to uh, get these senators to agree to vote in favor of the tax bill. Uh, they'll get Susan Collins too. Uh, is it, can I say it now? Oh, all these Republicans uh, that said, oh, they're not so sure about the tax cuts are all actually going to vote for giant tax cuts for the rich. Of course, of course they are. That's the whole point of being a Republican is to give tax cuts to the rich. So there was never any question. That's why, look, I and part of me, of course, understands why uh, the mainstream media has to say, well, Susan Collins is wavering. Ron Johnson says he cares about small business because. If you're in a, you know, if you're working at Reuters, you can't say Ron Johnson's a liar. He's not, doesn't care about small business. He's definitely going to vote for this tax cut. That's my job, <laughs> okay? But I told you from day one, Ron Johnson doesn't give a damn about small business. And at the end, all of them will vote for the tax cut, and they are. So look, some of them uh, did uh, demand things that it, it appears they've been promised to get. So uh, shout, shout things. Now let's. You're right; they are shout, shout. Uh, but uh, Mitch McConnell says, you know, we have the votes. Sometime today, we will wrap up. And and keep in mind that they are really in a rush to to pass this through, right? And I had no doubt that there wouldn't be as much difficulty with the tax bill as there was with the repeal and replacement of the Affordable Care Act. This is something that Republicans have always been in favor of and they didn't have to worry about disagreement as much as they did with the Affordable Care Act. Now let's talk about the concessions. So Daines and Johnson, Senators Daines and Johnson announced their support for the bill on Friday after winning more tax relief for non-corporate pass through businesses. These include most American business enterprises from mom and pop concerns to large financial and real estate organizations. The bill now features a 23% tax deduction for such business owners up from the original 17.4%. So these small businesses, as you mentioned earlier, will be getting more of a deduction under this bill. But you say it's shao shao, can you no, elaborate no. on that a little bit? No, it's actually more tax cuts for the rich. So yes, some of them will go to mom and pop stores and, and, and smaller businesses like uh, the Young Turks used to be a, a pass through business and, and we would have gotten a benefit out of that in the old days, okay? But it also applies to really large businesses like Donald Trump's business. Real estate or businesses, yes. Yeah, and some of those are gigantic, worth billions of dollars. So the concession they got for small business owners was more tax cuts for a lot of billionaires and millionaires. That's not a concession. Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. I'm going to take more from the middle class and give it to to richer people. No, but you make you make a great point because one thing that you should keep in mind as I go through these concessions, they're not concessions to help the little guy. They're concessions to further help you know those who are already standing to benefit somewhat from from this tax bill. Remember, this is the Senate plan, the same Senate plan um, that essentially will tax graduate students. If their tuition was waived because they agreed to work on campus, they will be taxed on their stipend, which is a, a very, you know, measly amount of money that, that students get to live off of. But on top of that, they'll be taxed on their tuition that has been waived. So when they file their taxes, they're gonna have to deal with the gigantic tax bill, which is out of control. And they're not they're not talking about, oh, that's we can't do that to, to students who are already grappling with student loan debt that they can never get rid of in bankruptcy. We're talking about concessions that further help, you know, people who are already at an advantage. And you talk about this a lot on the show. I student, do, I care about student, this a lot. Of course, yeah. everybody should, but student loan debt has already surpassed a credit, credit card, card debt. debt. So we already know that it's a big issue in this uh, in this country. But yeah, that I was always I was going over some of the things that aren't discussed directly as it refers to uh, this. Uh, tax cut or this bill, excuse me, it would make it so that let's just say uh, the House version makes it so that 10% of your gross income, if you spend more than 10% of your gross income on medical expenses, 
That's no longer, you can no longer write that off on your taxes. Yeah. So this hurts the sick people. Um, it hurts um, also, it triggers cuts to the Medicare program because the measure requires cuts to the federal program if the deficit increases. And it, it's been projected that, that it will increase the deficit. Mm -hmm. So that's gonna happen too. Steph, uh, let me just jump in there for a second because that's the one thing that Susan Collins pretends to care about. And she says, well, I don't wanna cut Medicare because I told everybody for years and years that I wouldn't do that. Uh, and so, but it does cut Medicare. So what are you gonna do about that, Susan Collins? She's still gonna vote yes, but she said yesterday, it's okay. I got a personal commitment from Mitch McConnell that he wouldn't let that happen years from now. <laughs> it's a personal commitment in the law. No, no, it's not. Okay, that personal commitment isn't worth the, well, I was gonna say the paper that it's written on, but it's not written on any paper. And there's also something else that the Senate bill will, would end the deductibility of state and local taxes entirely. And we know that seven states don't have a state income tax, Alaska, Florida, Nevada, South Dakota, Texas, Washington, and Wyoming. Oh, what a coinkydink that those are all red states. Well, except yeah. for Washington, but yes, oh, six, out of, six yeah. out of seven are all red states. The ones that have pay the, the largest state and local taxes are California and New York, the biggest blue states. So it is, a, it is income redistribution, but it goes from the blue states to the red states. So, and in the, in the case of the pass through income, it goes from the middle class directly to Donald Trump. So the big concession that Republicans got is, don't worry Donald Trump and his family, you're gonna get an even bigger tax cut. Those are not concessions. The only thing, last thing on the concessions from my point of view mm -hmm. is that these different senators have different donors. Mm -hmm. Some of them are the same, all the banks give money to almost all the Republicans and to a lot of the Democrats. But some of them have specific donors based on their state. There's a particularly rich guy in Wisconsin, there's three rich people in Kansas, etc. that give a giant amount of money to these senators. So they go, okay, no, 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 the tax cut I want is this. So that then they hold up the bill, they go, all right, well, look, man, I'm concerned about um, people in nursing homes. Okay, <laughs> and then they get a giant tax cut for a guy who runs hospitals in their own state, mm -hmm. who's actually a billionaire. Right, so almost all the concessions are for other donors. You're right, yes, um, and remember the Senate is also, uh, look, in order to pay for all these massive tax cuts for the wealthy, they also think about um, getting rid of certain deductions that yes, the wealthy take advantage of, but the middle class also gets to take advantage of. So uh, SALT, the state and local taxes that you were mm -hmm. referring to, Steph, um, are very important for a lot of people in, in California and New York and some of these states uh, that have uh, state taxes. But also keep in mind that they're thinking about doing away with uh, property tax deductions, mm -hmm. again, Something that helps incentivize property ownership by the middle class. And so Susan Collins claims that she's concerned about that, but it doesn't seem like she really has a strong or firm opinion on it. First, let's go to Jeff Flake though, because you mentioned the deficit jank, and Jeff Flake says that he's very concerned about what this plan would do to the deficit. Flake, once one of the firm holdouts because of concerns over this deficit, tweeted he would support the bill after getting, again, assurances from the White House. House and Senate GOP leaders that they would work on legislation related to DACA or Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. So he's saying that, hey, we need to do something to protect these individuals. I really care about them. And he's saying, okay, well, now I'm getting assurances and I have flipped in support of this bill. None of the assurances, as far as I can see, is actually in the legislation. So maybe they'll do something about DACA later. I don't see it. They're thinking of shutting down the whole government because of DACA. So they certainly didn't address it and conclude it in this bill. So it's a lot of BS from Republicans who just wanna vote yes for tax cuts for their donors about, oh, I got assurances that many, many years later that somebody will do something. Jeff Flake, you're retiring. When are we gonna do anything about this that's relevant to you? So, well, but, also yeah. when you talk about assurances, what exactly does that mean? So right. basically Mitch McConnell promised that something would be done down the road, because politicians are known to keep their word. <laughs> um, that's how that works. Yeah. Right, uh, now going back to Susan Collins, she announced that she would vote yes. Okay, this is one of the reports saying that she would vote yes. The new bill would include her request to allow taxpayers to write off $10,000 in property taxes paid to state and local governments. Um, so that is part of uh, her SALT concerns, and we'll see how that plays out. But I am concerned because, you know, 
again, there seems to be, in, in the wording of this legislation, there seems to be um, an effort to punish liberal states. And uh, I saw uh, some reporting in regard to disaster relief funding and how mm. that relief funding would specifically focus on hurricanes and storms and flooding and exclude or at least cut funding for earthquakes. I oh, mean, come on. <laughs> so, I mean, these types of things matter because uh, there seems to be like this concerted effort by some in, in Congress, in the Senate specifically, to uh, somehow punish uh, some of these states that tend to be blue states. So, uh, and can I just say, yeah. if we did likewise, if a liberal uh, president and a liberal Congress purposely targeted Alabama and Texas and said, well, if there's flooding in Texas, we're just not going to cover it. But if there's an earthquake in California, we're going to send a lot of money. And by the way, uh, you know, and rejigger the rules as they have here so that Texas pays more money and California pays less money in taxes, there would be holy hell to pay. Right. And they would say, how dare you? You're, these are the real Americans and middle America. And you see the liberals hate them. Why is it okay for the conservatives to hate uh, the people that live in blue state America and punish us and redistribute our wealth? It's, it's, they don't, it's, that they, it's not that they mind the redistribution of wealth, they just don't like it when it's the middle class. They, they like it when it's redistributing wealth to their donors and to, in some cases, small cases to their voters if they could take it from the blue states. If you become a member of the Young Turks, you'll be saying, you know, I'm like a smart person. So do it right now, tytnetwork.com slash join, get the whole Young Turks show every day.